you know, the observation, we talk about quality of movement versus quantity of movement. And a lot of times we're sort of stuck in the quantity and we, we feel or we see a quality movement. We don't quite know how to identify it, but we try to mimic it sometimes. And the mimic it is by trying to position correctly of what we saw or what we interpreted rather than what really is happening in that movement. Where are they allowing themselves to move? And that idea of novice to expert movement. So the novel mover will always over recruit, um, not sure where the movement or the organization is going to come from. I often think of riding a bike and, you know, they start out and they're jerking all over the place. And a week later, they're like, hey, mom, look, no hands and riding very efficiently on a bike. And, you know, this, this idea of moving from unconsciously incompetent movement, not knowing what they don't know into unconsciously competent at the other end. And really it's not a, end; it's a, you know, it's a continuum, but you know, how do we, how do we make that work? I love the idea of um, can't teach movement from a position. And I think that's really important for the Pilates teachers and the physical therapists that are on this webinar, uh, because so often, you know, everything is assessed in static. That was one of the things I put up there is like, you know, does static alignment really tell us anything about movement? And I do want to preface this in the sense that most of us that are on the webinar right now are on that spectrum of pathokinesiology to performance kinesiology. And the key word is kinesiology, the science of movement. We need to understand movement. And so as a physical therapist, I'm trying to restore movement to a level of function or as a performance practitioner, I'm trying to enhance their movement performance um, however I can, whatever tools I can use. Any thoughts on, on that idea, Eric, of, of sort of that continuum of, you know, our specialty is movement that's on this webinar. We are movers, we teach movement, we restore movement. You know, what, what's one of the first things you think of that you need to be an expert in to be able to work to work in this field well the you know one of the, th the things is that what does the, what does the person want to achieve so obviously mm -hmm. if they come to you in pain and they have an issue uh the number one goal is is to remove the pain and that mostly will involve uh, involve of course uh, improving function and Im improving efficiency but not always interestingly you know um compensation patterns sometimes are the name of the game we you know as and that brings us into low if you have a broken bone you know or something like uh, that that you have to do a dance around it so it might not be the ideal most efficient thing but it brings you you know out of pain so that's the one i think side of the cone there yeah. but if you want to improve performance um and performance you know, unless you're talking about walking and running and some of the things we are structured for, but if you're talking about dance, uh, Pilates, yoga like that, you know, I'm going to contradict myself on a level very nicely there. You have form. You cannot get away from form. There is form. So if you want to be a dancer or you want to demonstrate a Pilates exercise, you have to show good form, right? And that involves a position. And so the question is, how can you teach form and the kind of forms we work with, all of us and exist with, but still maintain that dynamic alignment so that people don't say, OK, the goal is to look good in the mirror. You know, I mean, I'm not against that at all. It's great if it looks good in the mirror. But what if it also feels good? And what if it's also efficient? So how to create that? That would be the goal. And I've had like arguments with people who say oh like for example ballet wrecks your body and i said i don't agree ballet can be great exercise but you have to really work on achieving those forms you know with good function and in a dialogue um with with whoever's trying to achieve them because especially if you look at some of those traditional forms dialogue doesn't exist you have the expert the super guru expert and this is how it is. And you have to get that form into your body. It doesn't matter if it wrecks it. And if it does, next in line, you know? So that's the other extreme there. And we're we're trying to be the nice ones here and saying, 
we can we can achieve that healthfully but then we need that dialogue and a lot of that world is not used to what we call student-centered teaching you know with um a lot of Juan Nieto's language lately has been talking about the idea of tissue adaptation, right? So the idea of sort of the Edo Portal and some of Mike Fitch work, work, work with animal flow and looking at how different ranges of motion, the mixed martial arts world, um, that the body needs to go into those and gradually increase the load in different direction, different planes, so that there is tissue, neurological, neuromuscular adaptation. And you said something earlier that I want to go back to, and that was the what the client wants, right? So one of the things we use a lot in, in pulse shows, we talk about uh, the ICF model. What do they want to participate in? What do you believe you should be participating in right now that you are not comfortable participating in right now? And what activities does that involve? And what demand does the body have to participate in those activities? 